Welcome back. My name is Chuck Ruthier, and this is my video on how to use Scratch um, and create a Space Invaders game. This is part two. Okay, uh, well, if we're going to have Space Invaders, we should probably have the aliens coming down on us. So, let us import the, uh, the alien. Okay, so you're going to click on the little folder with the star. And it, it should be left off in the invader folder where we were before. And you can see the uh, <laughs> invader looks kind of invisible, doesn't it? Well, it's white, so you can't really see it very well. Okay, but when I import it, there it is. Isn't that lovely? Okay, cool. Now, we want the invader... Here's what he's going to do. He's going to move slowly across the screen. He's going to hit the end, and then he's going to go down. Then he's going to come back across, and then he's going to go down again. So that is how the invader is supposed to move. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to use something called a variable. Now, variables are cool because you can change them in the program, um, and um, it, it it's just a it's a uh, it's a wonderful wonderful way of programming using variables. You you can't. You can't really do anything of any importance or usefulness uh, without using them. I think as, w as we go, you'll see exactly um, what these variable things do. Okay, so let's click on variables at the bottom uh, right hand here. And we're going to click make a variable. And um, we're going to call this one direction. And it, what this variable is going to do is it's going to point whatever... This is actually, um, I think, a better name for this would be direction step. And what this is going to do is it's you're going to hit OK, and whatever is in this direction step is going to be the direction and how many steps that our little guy is going to go. So uh, the way this is going to work is we're going to have him, he's going to start off moving to the right with a positive number. Da, 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 da. And then when he reaches a certain point over here, um, then the variable is going to change and it's going to say, come back in a negative direction. And back he'll come. Okay, So that is how that's going to work. You can see there's our little direction and it puts the direction step up here for us so we know um, what the number is going to be in there. So we'll leave that there for now. We'll get, we'll get rid of that at the end. Okay, very nice. Uh, so, uh, let's get going. Let's go to our control. And these things are going to move by themselves. And when you have things that just happen automatically all the time, then you want to use the cute little green flag. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked, we are going to set our direction. Uh, let's see, that's going to be motion. And where the heck is, uh, let's see, uh, we want our direction to be 10. Uh, oh, it's, I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're in the variable section. All right, I got a little confused here, I apologize. Okay, so click on your variables, they're nice and beautiful orange and you see where it says set direction step to zero let's bring that guy in and we're gonna tell this to move uh, 10 steps to the right okay so we'll hit the green flag and we've set the direction step to 10 and <laughs> I haven't actually told it to move so nothing happened that's what was supposed to happen <laughs> sorry Okay, now let's go to our control. Let's grab a forever, bring it in. Okay, and let us, we're going to tell this thing to go to the right. Okay, and that, when, we, when something's moving, that's motion. So we'll tell it to move 10. Move 10 steps. Now, this 10, we want this 10 to be this direction thing. 
okay? Because if it's going if it's going to the right, we want it to be positive. If it's going to the left, left, we want it to be negative. So we're going to be changing this variable here. That's why they call it a variable. It changes. Uh, so let's go back to our variables and drag direction step into there. So we set the direction, and then we move it in that direction. So now if I hit the green flag, our, our dude will just keep going right. Excellent. Now, we need a trigger to make it stop when it reaches a certain position, say somewhere around here. Um, now, if you look down at the X, you can see the, that we're right around 200. So why don't we say when the X position of our space invader uh, is, hits 200, then we'll have it stop, go down, and then you know, go the other way. We'll, 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 let's do the go down later. Let's just have it go backwards for now. Okay, so we've got we've got this now. So if you're if we say if this is greater than that, now we're talking you know about using the if statement. So let's go back to our control and let's find that if. Let's drag it in and put it inside the forever. So we're going to test something this with this if we're going to say if the position of this is past the 200, then do something for us. Um, so let's fix that. Now, if we are comparing two values, um, you're going to go up to this green one that says operators. Okay, and you know we're doing if x is greater than 200. That means it hits the the right right side over there. So let's find the blank greater than blank. You see that in there? I'm pointing to it with the mouse. Let's drag that into the F. So the first um, part of this is the X. If the X position of our little dude re is past 200, um, so let's put X position here. Uh, let's see, where is X position? Is that going to be motion? Yeah, here it is, X position. We'll put that in the very first one. Is greater than 200. Because you remember that from, you know, learning about the x, y axes and, and this whole game thing, you know, this doesn't go far. This, this, you can see how far this goes. At 200 is about as far as we want to go. Um, if the x position is greater than 200, then we want it to change uh, directions on us. Cool. How do we do that? <laughs> um Let's see, that would probably be in our variables, wouldn't it? Okay, so we can set our, we can reset our direction when that happens. So let's bring that in. And when, then we want it to go negatives. Okay, so we'd put a minus 10 in here and that would, would drive it backwards. All right, so let's look at our code. We've got, the, this thing gets clicked. Um, these start moving to the right. Okay, and then we check to see if the X position is greater than 200. And if it is, we reset the direction to go the other way. Um, and then we have this move direction. Uh, let's see, where the heck should that go? Um, that should probably go above the forever? Or does it go after here? Heck, I'm not sure. Let's try that out. Okay, so we're going to click the green. And nothing happens because it doesn't move. Because of this stupid thing. All right. Come on, Chuck. Get with it. So we'll put that in the forever. So we have forever and then move. And then we, and then we check. So let's see what happens now. Let's hit the green flag. Okay, that was cool. It went over, and then it came back, uh, and it stopped over here. Why is that? You uh, logical students should be realizing that we need to put another if statement in there, don't we? We need to say, if our little alien reaches, say, negative 200, then we need to reverse the direction again. 
Correct? Sound good? All right. Okay, so let's go back to our controls. Let's get another if. We'll drag it in. So we have two ifs in a row. We're going to get the operators again. And this time, instead of greater than, we're going to say less than. Because remember, if we're going, if we're going to the left, it's, it's negative. So right about here is negative 200. And if it gets to be negative 201, that's less than 200, negative 200, right? So let's find the negative, the, uh, the, the, the less than. Here it is. Let's put that in there. And again, we're going to test the x position to see if it's less than minus 200. And if it is, we're going to reset the direction again. Go to the variables, set direction to a positive 10, right? Because it's going to go to the right. All right, now if this all works, this thing should just bounce back and forth. Bing, bing, bing. Okay, I feel like I'm playing Pong. Excellent. So we have a, uh, we got our little guy moving left, and we got our little guy moving right. Okay, that's kind of cool. Now, what we probably want to do now, hmm, is this is moving way too fast. If you remember um, from watching me play the little game at the very beginning, you know these little space invaders move kind of slow. So I am thinking we should insert uh, something to slow things down. Let's go to our control, and you see where it says wait one second. Let's take that, and let's pop that in there. And now let's test again. And as lovely as that is, boy, that is so darn slow. Um, let's try increasing the, um, the number of steps it takes. Why don't we change all our 10s to 20s? So that'll be a 20. This will be a negative 20. And this will be a positive 20. OK, so let's hit our green flag. And that's a little better. So if you like that, great. I like it. That looks neat. And it should, when it hits the end, it should pop on back. Do, 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 do. And there we go. And it comes back. All right, we are having some wonderful success here. Uh, OK, um, we need it to move down now. It's going to go over, then it's going to move down, and then it's going to move back. So. That's easy enough, right? How do you move things down? Which axis should you use? That's right, the y-axis. So let's go on over to our motion. And remember the difference between change and set, please. Change adds or subtracts to a number. Set makes it that number, and it stays that number forever until something changes it. OK, so when, you're, when you've got things like motion and stuff um, where it's um, or we use the change because we want it to keep changing. OK, so let's change the y. Um, oh. And let's have it go down 25. So that's going to be a minus 25. And we can duplicate that. Oh, isn't that cool? And we'll put that down there. And minus, it's they're both minus 25 because minus 25 drives it down. OK, let's. Uh, Let's play our video again. It has a little funny bump when it comes down, but I'm not uh, too concerned. This is really what I'm, I know I'm teaching you how to make space invaders, but my real goal here is to teach you how to program in, Al in and not in Alice, sorry, my other kids are doing Alice, um, is Scratch. I want you to learn how to program in Scratch and apply these principles so that you can do whatever you want in Scratch. That's really where um, I'm going with this. Uh, all right, so I think we've 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 done nicely here, and I think we should probably we don't need this direction step thing anymore. You can, by the way, you can see when it's moving left, it's a minus. When it's moving to the right, it's a plus. 
So we can turn that off pretty easily if we just go to our variables and we uncheck this. We can put anything we want up there. In fact, later on in the game, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put the score up there. Okay, so uh, that's a part two. In part three, we'll um, add more of these, and uh, it will make it even more interesting. So thank you for listening, and work hard learning your stuff. Bye.